Hello. Today I'd like to show you how to prepare scenarios using Microsoft Excel. The version of Excel that I'm using here is 2011 for Mac. The approach should be similar for different versions of Microsoft Excel or operating systems. Let us assume that you have prepared some uh, uh, forecasting cash flows and you want to prepare the uh, value of equity to some company. The model that I'm using here is the model of free uh, operating cash flow to the firm. In order to use this model, the discounted factor or the discount rate that we should use is the weighted average cost of capital. That is, we take into consideration the, uh, the required cost of, um, of equity uh, or the required return rate of equity, but also the debt ratio of our company. So I assume that you already know how to calculate the weighted average cost of capital. In order to calculate it, you need to make quite a lot of assumptions, for example, assumptions about the risk-free rate when you are going to, to calculate the, the interest rate that you derive from the kappa model, the beta, of the company, market risk premium, etc. etc. But if one of your assumptions changes, it means that your weighted cost, uh, your weighted average cost of capital is going to change, and uh, also the value of equity or your uh, your estimation or your valuation is going to change as well. So it will be a good thing to prepare different scenarios based on. Uh, based on these changes that you uh, think are most probable to happen. So, in order to calculate the value of the equity in here, I have the free operating cash flow to the firm. These numbers that I have derived, of course, are related to some assumptions that I made and uh, to the previous uh, analysis or to the analysis from the previous years. After year 2017, I am assuming that the free cash flow to the firm is going to remain constant and uh, up to infinity. And for in order to discount this uh, uh, this uh, uh, amount here from infinity, I use the discounting rate one of the over WAC. However. The discount that I'm using brings the value up to the end of year 2017, but I need to have it at 2013, and for this reason I have to discount it again for five years, that is, I have to, to multiply the number that I derive from here by this discounting factor. Then I, then I calculate here, <coughs> sorry, and then I calculate here the cumulative discounted uh, free cash flow to the firm, which is nothing else but just the sum of multiplication of these two uh, uh, cells or two rows, basically. If you click here, you see all the formula, that is multiplication of these two and sum at the same time. And for the very last one, we have three multiplications, that is we have the F15, which is the discounting factor for five years, uh, G14, which is the amount of money that I think is going to, or I assume that is going to remain constant up to infinity, and of course the discounting factor from infinity, which is 1 over the discounting rate. And then I have to deduct the interest rate and cash and add cash at the bank, and I'm going to have this. Uh, this number, which is the value of equity that I am assuming. Okay, what I would advise you to do is to name the parameters of the WEC model. Naming is, is a good idea because it makes the references to have a meaning for us when we are going to see, it. for example, when we produce scenarios or also when referring to, to the cells in here, for example, when we calculate the weighted average cost of capital. If we do not use the names, here at this formula, for example, we were going to see uh, instead of beta, for example, here we were going to see M, M2 or M3. I'm not sure what will be the number. Yeah. 
which is not that informative to us. However, if you see here beta, it is really meaningful to you and you know what you are talking about. A good thing for naming is that at the moment that you name some cell, you make it obsolete. That is, you can call it from any uh, any worksheet in your document. You don't need to, to put the strings. For example, here at this at this uh, cell that I have selected, it is the cell L19. That is, if I want to refer to the cell uh, below it, for example, L20, I have to do it like L20 multiplying something. But if I want to make it obsolete, I also need to add strings. Sorry, strings should be before. String here. String here. L20 times, I don't know, times 2. Here. That is 3. Automatically you are going to have here 6. However, if you are using the naming, you don't need to put any of these strings here in order to refer to the cell. You just type equals for example, beta in our case, beta times 2, and that's it. This cell here, for example, equals beta. You are going to have this nice pop-up, pop-up, beta times 3, for example. You see that it makes it really useful if you are going to use the names. And of course you use the names for all of the parameters. For example, for this number here, uh, which represents the debt ratio, you name it debt ratio. And of course, at the finally, what you are doing is also you name the weighted average cost of capital. That is, you have the name in here. By having that name, if you see when I do the discount here, I type just one overweighted cost, average cost of capital. If it was not named, I was going to do it like M, M10. However, it is more informative to me. Now we can go and continue in preparing the, the scenarios. Let us assume that the scenario that we have here, that is with these parameters that we have here are our basic scenario or the scenario that we think most probably is going to, to happen. Now we go and click the tools and go to scenarios. This uh, window is going to pop up. Here I have many scenarios because I have prepared them in advance. However, you are not going to have here any scenario and for this reason you need to add some scenario and you click add and you have to write some name to the scenario for example market risk premium premium increases by 2% for example. The next thing that you do is that you need to uh, give the changing cells scenarios. That is where to look. You are going to tell Excel what to, where to look for cells that may have changed. This is already selected for me, but you have to select it in case it is not. That is, you are going to select all the parameters of the, of the CAPM model. That is from here up to here. You see, also the referencing here is made by using the strings because it needs to be obsolete. And then you press OK. Now, because the default values here are going to be the, the values of your basic scenario, you need what you need to do is that you need to change the, uh, the cell that is related to the scenario that you just created. If you see from your left, for example, you have the names. That is why naming the cells is really useful. That is, you have the beta. And you know, if you make some change, you know what you are doing. But if you did not have beta, for example, and you had some M string 3, it is not that useful for you to know that, okay, what cell you are changing and what is 
and, and how it is it related to the WAC model. Now, in the scenario that you just created, it was the scenario that the market risk premium increases by 2%, so you need to change this number to 0.1, and then you press OK. That is, you just created one scenario in here. You are going to do the same. Uh, if you want to create more scenarios, click Add, then some name, changing cells, and that is it. Now that you have created the scenarios, what you can do is, for example, in order to see what will be the effect of some scenario, that beta increases by 0.1. And 0.1 it is related, of course, with the basic scenario. You click here and you press Show. At the moment that you press Show, you, you can check that all the numbers from uh, here in your parameters of the model, that is the yellow cells in here, changed and also the value of equity here changed. Now I'm doing another scenario. Debt ratio increases by 5%. Press show. You see that everything here changes and value of equity again. If you noticed, what also changed there was the beta because my basic scenario was different from, uh, from the one that I just used. But nevertheless, always you have to prepare the changes with respect to the basic scenario. Okay, a good thing would be to see the effect of all scenarios at the same time. That is not to go and press show and to find to find out what will be the number. That is selecting some scenario, you press show. Select this one, you press show. That is not really informative to you. What you could do is that you prepare a summary. That is, you prepare. Uh, an outcome if each of these scenarios happens and what would be the final value of your valuation model. Thus you press summary. Now you make sure that you, well probably you want to select other options but I would prefer to, pre uh, to, uh, to check scenario summary and then the result cells this is very important because this should be the, uh, the cell that would be reported to you. In our case what we need is that we need to find the value of equity. That is, we don't need any of these other cells, but we need the final value in here. That is this number. So now I have all these pluses. But the number that I need is only the B19. OK. So now I press OK. And here is the outcome of each of, it, of these scenarios. That is for the current value. Our predictions hold. That is our basic scenario. Market risk premium increases by 1%. And if you see here, if this is the basic scenario, if market risk premium increases by 1%, the only number here that changes is the market risk premium. That is from 8% to 9%. And this change makes the, the value of equity to change from 50 million something to uh, 47 million something. However, uh, if you have only the nominal values, probably it is not that informative. A good idea would be to add some more, uh, some more rows in here, which uh, would, for example, I give you the, uh, the change in percentage. For example, in one of in one of my uh, in one of the cases that I have made the calculations, what I have done is that I made these changes. For example, I put some colors in here in order to look nicer, but whatever. This is not very important. But here, for example, you can see the change of equity value in percentage terms. That is, uh, if, for example, the scenario that happens is that market risk premium increases by 1%, the value of company changes from 50 million up to uh, and goes to 47 millions. However, this number from may not be that informative, but if I use here the change in percentage, then I have um, a better or a clearer 
view what is going on. That is, 1% change in the market risk premium decreases the value of the company by 5%. And of course, you can do this for all of the scenarios. And if you can see some of the some of the uh, uh, some of the changes of the parameters are are more uh, are more that is our model is more sensitive to, to some of the parameters of the models than to some others. You can use your imaginations and prepare uh, probably better better uh, tables than this. And uh, well, I hope that you like this presentation and probably you're going to find it useful. Uh, thank you very much.